happy Sunday to all. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning, thank you, welcome. Go ahead and share as you join. I invite you to share as you join. May the Lord bless you here today. Canada, good morning Canada. Good morning, Canada. Welcome. Brooklyn, New York. Welcome. Go ahead and share. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. We give glory to the Lord. He reign. Jesus. Good morning, New Jersey. Good morning, Windsor, Connecticut. Good morning. Wherever you're connecting from, I invite you to share. Hallelujah. well bless the Lord oh my soul and let's not forget his daily benefits towards us good morning blessings to all greetings from my end wherever you are hallelujah wherever you are mm. Somebody go ahead and share this message as you join the In the Spirit, New Jersey. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning and welcome. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody declare, today is my day. Somebody go ahead and declare, today is my day. Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Kingston, Jamaica. Good morning. Trinidad, good morning. Welcome, welcome. Declare today is my day. Jesus. Today is my day. I have made it to the tenth month of the year. Today is my day. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Today is my day of breakthrough. Today is my day of deliverance. Today is my day of no turning back. Hallelujah. Today is my day of going forward with all that God has said about me. It will come to pass. Today is my day for signs and wonders. According to the word of God, the Bible said, Sign and wonder shall follow them that believe. Today is my day. Today I declare generational wealth will increase around me, through me, and with me. Today is my day. I'm no longer a slave. To the plans of the enemy. Today is my day. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I am coming out. Today is my day. I am coming out. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Today is my day. Today is my day. Whatever I decree and I declare, it shall come to pass. Open your mouth and say it. Declare it. Whatever I decree, whatever I declare, it shall come to pass in this season. I am in the 10th month. The month of faith. My God. Jesus. Number seven is not the only number of completion. Ten is also completion. Today, I make declarations and I will see manifestation. I will experience demonstration of manifestation of the Holy Spirit in my life. Today is my day. Today be Korobokosaya. Today is my day. I will enjoy the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and add no sorrow. Today is my day. I will fear nothing. I will not live in fear. Today is my day. To walk out in faith. And believe that whatever God has said about me, it will surely come to pass. Today is my day. Today I declare my healing. Today I declare victory. Today I declare breakthrough. It is my month of declaration. It is a month of faith. And I believe whatever God said, so shall it be. It is a month of faith. Whatever God has started, He will finish it. He who has started a good thing in you, He shall surely take it to perfection. Today, new beginning will happen. It will take place. All you got to do is believe. Sickness will depart. 
contention will depart. There will be peace in your house as of today. As of today, I pray your eyes will be open. As of today, the spirit of discernment will be your portion. As of today, no more blinders over your eyes. As of today, because we are in the tenth month. As of today, whatever you touch, it will be blessed. As of today, whatever you do, it will be blessed. As of today. Your covenant seed will speak on your behalf. Your name will be great. Your gifts will manifest. We are speaking life into it. No more disappointment. No more waiting in line. As of today. We call for good news from the east. Good news from the west. Good news from the north. Good news from the south. As of today. Open your mouth and pray. We are in a new month. We are in a new month. No more setback. Be in the spirit and be a partaker of what the Lord is doing here. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We worship you. We magnify you. Lord, we adore you. You are our covenant keeping God. The one who never break a promise. The one who never lose a fight. Lord, you have never lost a battle. And today we come before you. We present ourselves before you today, Lord God. You said when we agree and touch anything. When we agree, when we come in agreement. When we gather in your name. Touching and agree on anything. It will come to pass. And we make declarations today. We decree and we declare. That every word that was released in the atmosphere, it will come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray today, O oh God, as we have entered into the tenth month of the year. Good news will come from afar. Blessings will come from afar. As we are in the tenth month, Lord God, we declare favor upon our children favor upon every child that is connected to this platform today we pray that everyone that get the opportunity to see this message will be blessed in the name of jesus christ of nazareth oh god we present our case before you we present our children before you we come against the spirit of confusion. We come against the spirit of contention. We release good news in the air. We declare good things over our life. We be korobo We speak positive in the atmosphere. We are winners and we are champion. We will excel. Greatness will come forth out of us. We will give birth to greatness. Our children will birth out greatness. Let it be well with our family, Lord God. Let peace continue to reign, O oh God, in our homes. We destroy the yoke of bondage. O oh God, anyone here today under bondage, according to the word of God, according to Isaiah, we destroy that yoke of bondage today. We set the captives free today. We release good news in the atmosphere. We receive good news today. We receive healing and breakthrough today. We receive deliverance today. Good health, 
mighty God. As you are getting ready to send great people among us, Lord God, let it be well with them. Let our destiny helper never be detained. Release destiny helper, O oh God. Release husbands to these single women, mighty God. And release wives to these single men. Lord, we come up against every third party in marriages. Anything that is set forth to destroy marriage, Lord, we destroy it today. We set fire. We set fire to anything that is set forth to block marriages. We set fire to anything that is set forth to destroy finances. We set the fire of God upon the fakataka bokutaka. Robada kushode boko sata. Rotobo boko shede beka sataya. In the name of Jesus, everything that will come up again. So baba kusho to kusataya. Run the robobo. We set fire. Anything that will come up against finances, we set fire to it. Lord, we release breakthrough today. We release more weddings, anniversaries, baby showers, baby dedication, bridal showers, vacations for your people, oh God. Set them free. Release documents, mighty God, to those who are undocumented. Bless them, mighty God, in this season. There shall be celebration. More celebrations. We decree and we declare it done over your people today, Lord God. Those who are hiding, mighty God, bless them that they can come forth in boldness. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We declare more businesses will be birthed. Ministries will be birthed. Ministry within the ministry will be birthed. No more premature death. No more miscarriage. My God. We declare that our children will be filled with billionaire ideas. And birth it out. We declare, oh God, soldiers will be birthed, doctors will be birthed, police officers will be birthed, immigration officers will be birthed, lawyers will be birthed, pastors will be birthed, prophets and prophetess will be birthed in El Shaddai prayer tower. We decree and we declare. Engineers will be birthed. Pilots will be birthed. Scientists will be birthed. Out of El Shaddai prayer tower. My God. Let it be well with us. I cover myself even now. In the blood of Jesus Christ. As I submit myself to the Holy Spirit to use me. Use me to your glory. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Take your rightful position among us. Take control and let it be well with us in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. As you heal the sick today and the brokenhearted, as you release the captives today, Lord God, we call it done. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Chebe Korobo Somebody help me to worship God. I don't know what you're going through. But I encourage you to pray. We make some declarations. We are making declarations. I encourage you. I pray that there will be a blessing coming to you. Cheryl Greenwood. Over there in UK. My prayer is that the Lord perform a miracle in your eyes. Abarokoshaya. I pray that the Lord will perform a miracle in your eyes. I pray that he don't only open your eyes but give you discernment to see beyond the physical. Abarokosataya. 
Rababa ya koshete ya baba okorobo. Mighty God. I pray the Lord begin to use you in your family. Mighty. Jesus. It is well. Glory to God. I, I feel the presence of God. I, I feel the presence of God right here. Ah, I, I hear the Lord said somebody somebody need to sow into this message. I feel the presence of God. I don't know what God is doing, but I hear the Lord said somebody need to release into this message. Release your seed into this message. I feel the presence of God. Hey, hey. Jesus. I don't know what God is about to do. But I hear the spirit of the Lord said, somebody need to release a seed into this message. I don't know who this is for, but I encourage you to move in obedience. Release your seed in this message. Something is about to happen. Something is about to take place. I don't know who this is for, but the spirit of the Lord is saying, release. Release. Release your seed into this message. Whatever your story is, release it upon your story. Whatever you need, he will supply. Oh, hallelujah. Hey, Rabba, Koshiri, Bikosato. Release upon it. I don't know what you're going through, but I'm going to stay on this right here for a second. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, You know your situation. Release a seed into the message. He has never done this before. God has never done this before. Yebe kokosheta. Jesus. Ah. It will be well with you. Whoo, Jesus. It will be well. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It will be well. Mighty God. Mm. Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, you're good. Somebody go ahead and share this message. I, I don't know who this one is for, but the Spirit of the Lord is saying, release your seed in the message. You know what you need. Jesus. Jesus, do it for your people, oh God. Do it for your people this hour. Do it for your people this morning. Release the captives today, oh God. Do it for your people this morning. Do it for your people today, oh God. Oh my God, release your people out of bondage. Release your people today, daddy Jesus. Hey, Jesus, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. God bless you all. Welcome all first time viewers. God bless you. May you never leave the way you came. Thank you, Holy Spirit. May you never leave the way you came. Hallelujah. Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus. Yes, Daddy Jesus. It is well. Welcome. Happy Sunday morning to all. God bless you. Good morning and welcome. See if I can turn this thing up. Go ahead. Welcome. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone on the live. Happy Sunday to all. Welcome. God bless you. Go ahead and bring us that song that is in your spirit. Hallelujah. I have a song this morning. This song is really a message to somebody. And I pray that as I sing this song, that somebody will draw closer to God. 
Amen. Thank you, Jesus. be ready Jesus be ready for his return he's coming back get your business straight hallelujah Jesus. Jesus. I pray we all be ready. For his return. Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray we all be ready for his return. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. I pray we all be ready for his return. Mm. Mm. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. Jesus. I 
my prayer we all be ready for his return thank you jesus get our business straight so we can meet at heaven gate hallelujah for his return jesus we must be ready we must be ready we have to be ready we must be ready we have to be ready we must be ready we must be ready Pray we all be ready for his return thank you jesus thank you jesus god bless you god bless you i thank god you found the time this morning to join us to be a blessing to us god bless you and have a blessed day the songwriter said i pray we all be ready when he returned i pray we all be ready god bless you god bless you pray we all be ready for his return we give god honor and praise for this song i've never heard it before but it's powerful i pray that you are all ready for his return he is coming back again jesus is coming back so you need to repent and get your life in order. The song says, get your business straight. I pray you're ready. It's time to stop playing church. It's time to stop playing games. Get yourself in order. This song is telling you to repent. And fix your life in order. How long are we going to play church? How long are we going to pretend hell is real? Hell is real. It's time for us to wash our hands clean and come out of sin. God bless you. God bless you. You can take you can take your leave. God bless you. People of God, listen. It's time to be ready for his return. It's time to be ready. God is not playing any games with any one of us. Many are saying they are not ready to come to Christ yet because they are not married. Who told you that? Many are saying that they are not ready to come to Christ because they have no clothes. <laughs> there is a word that says come as you are. He will provide. You make that first initiative and watch what God will do for you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and he will give you everything you need. Be ready for Jesus. It's better to be prepared than to wait. Tomorrow may be too late. You cannot repent when you are in the grave. There is no repentance in the grave. It's time to repent. Perilous time we are living in. It's time to be warned. You're going to get into trouble with God if you are not prepared. You might have an accident and you never make it back home. The man said he wanted to be baptized. He accepted Christ. And the same week that he accepted, the same week when he requested to be baptized, he fell and broke his ribs. He want to be baptized. But if you dig into the word of God. It tells us that a day is coming. When there will be no one to minister the word of God to you. A day is coming. When no one will be available to pray for you. To preach to you. A day is coming. It's time to take warning. It's time to be warned. We are living in a perilous time. Hallelujah. We are living in a perilous time. A day is coming. 
when no one will be there to minister the word of God to you. Hallelujah. No one will be available to preach to you because of the time that we are in. My God. Hey, Jesus. Glory to God. Mm. There will no there will be no one for you to talk to. According to the book of Amos, it says, And he said, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, A basket of summer fruit. Then the Lord said to me, The end is come upon my people. I will not again pass them by anymore. Hallelujah. And the songwriter make it clear. There shall be many dead bodies in every place. And they shall cast them forth with silence. God is not playing. God is not playing. Many will be waiting for someone to come live. To bring forth the word of God. And there won't be anyone available. I came to talk to somebody here today. Get serious about God. Because he is serious about you. Get serious about God. God is serious about you. I don't know who God is using me to talk to here. The song came that we are living in a perilous time. But the Bible make it clear. According to the book of Amos. My God. Let us look at Amos chapter 8 and verse 12 real quick. It says, and they shall wander from sea to sea and from north even to the east. And they shall run to and fro to seek the word of God and shall not find it. Many people will be looking for Pastor Rattigan and she is nowhere to be found. We are living in a perilous time. You will say, I'm not going to the church. Take me to Pastor Rattigan. When God already called Pastor Rattigan home. Stop playing church. Stop playing church people of God. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us just now. People will be running to and fro to seek the word of God. And no one will be there to preach to them. Nobody. Church doors will be closed. And they will say, oh, remember that big mouth woman on Facebook and Instagram. Let us go see if she's on YouTube. No. You run to the rock for a hiding place. There is nowhere to hide from God. We are living in a perilous time. Take warning. It's time to repent. Hello, Baba Koshata. It's time to repent. It's time to repent. Jesus. My God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's time to repent. Wherever you're connecting from. Class of 83. El Shaddai Prayer Tower. Instagram. Facebook. YouTube. Wherever you're connecting from this morning. I came to let you know. As we are in the new month. It's time to think positive and speak life into your children. Speak life over your friends. Speak life over those who you care about. Those who you love. Pray for your enemies. Stop walking around looking defeated. 
The end is near. Your action cause reaction. Speak the truth wherever you go. Repent when you sin. Tomorrow may be too late. Tomorrow may be too late. The book of Amos remind us. It says, and they shall wander from sea to sea. And from the north even to the east. And they shall run to and fro. To seek the word of the Lord and not find it. They shall not find it. Many of us we are taken for granted because we can go to social media and listen to other people preach. We can go to church but we ignore the warning signs. We refuse to repent. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's time to repent. It's time to set your house in order. Set your house in order. Tomorrow may be too late. Set your house in order. No one cares what you look like. This physical body will not go to heaven. God don't care about your looks. He worry about your health. He said he wants you to prosper and be in good health. Even as your soul prosper. So God is not concerned about the way you look. He said, come as you are. The devil might remind you of some sin that you have committed. All you got to do is repent. God is saying it's time to repent. The end is near. It's time to repent. Wherever you are, it's time to repent. There is no repentance in the grave. The man told his wife that he's ready to be baptized. And that same week he fell. He never made it back to church. He broke his ribs and he suffered until his eyes were closed. Tomorrow is not promised to any man. Jesus loved all of us. He said it's not his desire for any one of us to go to hell. He wants us to go to heaven. Hell is for Satan. Hell was created for Satan. People of God, hell is real. Hell is real. I encourage you in this time to turn it over to Jesus Christ. Tomorrow is not promised. There is no message more powerful than to tell you to repent. This is why Jesus talks about John. John talks about Jesus, John the Baptist. He said he was not even qualified to lace up Jesus' shoes. And John the Baptist was the one who baptized Jesus Christ, his cousin. But I want somebody to know here this morning. When Jesus showed up on the scene, he said, repent and believe the gospel. So if you're here and you're struggling with your faith, it's time for you to start reading the word of God and believe. The reason why the devil don't want you to, do, to study the word of God is because the moment you begin to get deeper in the word, Satan will lose his grip. Satan will lose his grip. And this morning I came to speak to someone. Whatever you're going through. It's time for the devil to release you. To take his hands off of you and your children. It's time to get it right with God. The song said. Jesus is coming back again. Get ready and stop playing church. This is not to condemn you. This is to convict you so you can walk out of sin. Stop. Pay attention today. 
take this serious. If you never hear my voice again, remember this. It's time to get it right with God. This is not to scare you. Hell is real. Sin is a reproach unto all. You're saying that you don't have enough clothes to go to church. Who told you that? You're saying that you're, you're not married so you're not ready to go to give your life to the Lord. Who told you that? We're calling forth all sinners in this season. We are calling forth the prostitute. We are calling forth the gambler. We are calling forth the gunman. We are calling forth those who are backstabbing others. We are calling forth the murderers. We are calling forth those who practice witchcraft. We are calling forth stop practicing witchcraft. Get your hands clean. Come out of sin. We are calling forth all iniquity workers to repent and come out of sin. Jesus loves you. You don't have to render evil for evil. Who am I talking to? You don't have to render evil for evil anymore. It's time to forgive. It's time you want Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins. And you refuse to forgive those who hurt you. It's time to let go of that grudge. Let go of envy. Let go of jealousy. We are in a new season. It's coming close to the end of the year. Where there are more accidents than ever. And most of the things that are happening, it requires blood. It's time for us to pray. No more shedding of blood. No more shedding of blood. When you look at the news of what's going on in Jamaica. Oh my God. 15 years old. Went out and when he came back home at 4 in the morning. His daddy shot him thinking that he was an intruder. I came to talk to somebody here today. Innocent. Died. It's time to repent. It's time to turn a new leaf. You're saying that you're not ready yet. What are you waiting on? And I'm going to use the same word that one pastor used. That's what convicted me so I could give my life to the Lord. Old tough con green. This is to all old tough con green. What are you looking for in hell? Sin is a reproach unto all. Those words got me convicted. I wanted to fight that pastor. When he preached that sermon in Hartford, Connecticut. And here I am today as a witness. Calling forth sinners to come to repentance. It's time to repent. You cannot repent when you're in the grave. Tomorrow may be too late. Turn your life over to Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter how sweet that food is that you're going to have later. Remember salvation is sweeter. You might be single and you're waiting for God to bless you with a spouse. Come to Jesus Christ. He will choose your spouse. It's time to be clean. It's time to live clean. It's time to stop putting yourself down. We serve a God of second chance. Jesus loves you. And this is all I came to say this hour. Jesus loves you. He will give you that spouse that you're praying for. Come out of that married man life. Come out of that married woman life. It's time to repent. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. He will strengthen your heart. Mighty God. There is no repentance in the grave. We are in the 10th month of the year. Many people have not received anything since the beginning of the year. Hallelujah. But according to the word of God, many will be looking for people to pray for them. And no one will be available. Many will be looking for a broadcast and there will be no more Facebook. Many will go to Instagram and Instagram is not working. Many will click on YouTube and the network is down. It's time to turn to Jesus Christ. Tomorrow is not promised to any one of us. Tomorrow is not promised to any one of us. I came this morning 
to share this message. Hallelujah. Let us give God honor and praise. And if you're joining for the first time, once again, welcome. My message today is short. Yes, very short. Mighty God. The Bible make it clear. That 10 is also a number of a testimony. And it's God's perfect number and the completion of order. And this is why we have 10 commandments. We are in the month, the 10th month of the year. But this is why we have 10 commandments. 10 represent responsibility. Yes, we have 10 commandments. My God. Ten represent the responsibility. Are you responsible enough to keep the Ten Commandments? The Bible tells us that our tithe is supposed to be one tenth of our earning. And it's a testimony of our faith in the Lord. So ten also represent faith. Are you faithful enough to give ten percent of your earning to God? It's called tithing. In the book of Exodus, it talks about the Passover lamb. It was selected on the tenth day of the first month. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Jesus was the lamb of this world. Somebody help me to worship him. The Bible talks about the ten patriarchs. The Bible speak of the ten patriarchs. In the Old Testament. Who preceded Noah? Adam, Seth, Enos, Canaan, Melahil, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech. He was the father of Noah. And let's not forget Enoch. He was transported to heaven. And he lived 365 days. 365 years. How many days in the year? 365 days in the year. Enoch walked with God and he lived to see 365 years. And that was young back then. Methuselah lived 900 years. Hey! We're talking about the patriarchs. The 10 patriarchs in the Old Testament. Mighty God. You know, there were the Bible talks about ten women who caused murder, other people to die. Yes, the Bible talks about in Judges chapter four. Sarah, Sarah killed by a woman. A peg they used to drive into his head. His name was Sisera. Mighty God, the Bible talks about in Judges again, Judges chapter 9, verse 53. Abimelech was killed by a woman who dropped a millstone on his head. In 2 Samuel, the Bible talks about a woman who caused Sheba's head to be cut off. Jesus. In 1 Kings, the Bible talks about a harlot. Who roll over on her baby and kill the harlot. Anybody remember the harlot them that went to Solomon? King Solomon. She killed her baby and stole the other woman's baby. Hallelujah. Jezebel. She caused Naboth to die. Because Naboth had a vineyard. Now we know what a vineyard is. Hallelujah. Her husband wanted that vineyard. So you see. Jezebel was not the only bad one here. Her husband was also bad. Mm -hmm. So she wrote a letter and had that man killed so her husband could inherit the property. The Bible tells us in the book of 2 Kings, these women were starving and they boiled the baby and eat the baby in Samaria. And then the other lady said, I'm not eating my son. So the woman tricked her 
They were starving. There was a siege going on in Samaria at the time. In the Bible, we're talking Bible people of God. Women who cause other people to die. In 2 Kings, we are in the 10th month, so let us keep it real. In 2 Kings 11, it tells us that Ataliah, the mother of King Azariah, had the entire royal seed killed. The whole royal family were killed because of a woman. Atalia. And you know, in the book of Esther, chapter 9, the Bible tells us that Esther, she had Haman and his ten sons killed. They were enemies of the Jew. They were enemies. Him and his sons, ten sons, they died. Queen Esther caused this thing to happen. We're talking about women who cause other people to die. And the book of Matthew, the Bible tells us that John the Baptist's head was required. And I talk about John the Baptist all the time. He was friends with King Herod. The woman, her name was Herodias. Her husband was thrown into prison so King Herod could sleep with her. And when John said, no, that is not supposed to happen. Herodias Allow her daughter to dance for the king and tell the king we need John the Baptist's head. So you see, John lost his life because of a woman. He was friends with the king. We need to know the word of God. We need to study the word of God. Yes, mighty God. Remember, God sent ten plagues. God sent 10 plagues down in Egypt. Many times God wants to save his people. And he will send plagues to other people's house. So they can release you. I don't know who is here in bondage today. But I pray that plagues will enter the homes of your enemies. So you can be released. Many of them they plant witchcraft on you. Many of them they won't stop talking bad about you. They are praying against you. But today I pray that plagues will enter their homes. I'm coming to you straight from the word. I'm not mixing it. Straight from the Bible. God sent plagues, 10 plagues to Egypt to destroy Egypt so he could get his children out of there. Who is here in bondage today? My God. The Bible said frogs were sent to Egypt. May the Lord send frogs to your enemies. Lice was sent to Egypt. Swarms of beasts plague the cattle. These are the things that God did. Boils were sent to Egypt. Storm, hail, thunder, and lightning. May lightning and thunder destroy those who are fighting you and your children. May the Lord send lightning and thunder. The Bible said, Locust was sent to eat up their substance. May the Lord send locusts to them to eat up their substance. Those who are fighting you, those who are coming up against you, those who are holding on to your blessing. May the Lord send locusts to eat them up. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm serious. If you are here and you're not in the spirit, you need to click off and come back. Because I'm serious. There are some people facing serious challenges. So we are sending plagues to them. Those who are challenging you and your family. We are sending plagues to destroy them. We are in the 10th month. And if you really want to know how blessed you are. Look at your bank account. 
If you really want to know how blessed you are, look at your passport. If you really want to know how blessed you are, look around in your house. If you really want to know how blessed you are, I came to let you know. Go into your bathroom and look around. Go into your kitchen and look around. If you really want to know how blessed you are, look at your travel documents. Look at that phone. Look at the look at the conversation. The last conversation you is, you had on your phone, and look at the contents of the text message. Look how blessed you are. If you really want to know, the Bible said, after God sent all these things, He sent locusts. Then the river Nile turned into blood. Anybody remember the river Nile where, what's her name? Miriam was the one who laid down Moses in the basket to go down the river Nile so Moses could be raised up in, in the palace with Pharaoh's daughter. That river Nile, God used Moses to turn it into blood. Hallelujah, Jesus. The Bible said, when the sun of heaven shall fall, and the moon shall turn into blood. Then the son of man shall appear. Zion awake. Awake Zion awake. Awake and trim your land. Awake Zion awake. Awake and trim your land. When the stars of heaven shall fall. And the moon shall turn into blood. And the son of man shall appear. Zion awake. Yes. It's time to arise. We are in the 10th month of the year. If you really want to know how blessed you are, look at your travel documents. May the Lord have mercy upon you today. Hallelujah. The Bible declare that Moses was in the same river Nile. And that's how the, 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 the princess of Egypt got him out of the river. And she gave him near Moses because she found him in a basket in the water. And look what God did. That same river Nile was a blessing to Egypt. God turned it into blood. You see, the Sia I came to let you know there are some things that God will do just for you. May the Lord turn their rivers into blood. May the Lord turn their rivers. The, many of you, if you could ever see where they put your name. If you could ever see where they put your money. If you could ever see where they put your clothes. May the Lord turn their rivers into blood. May darkness fill their homes. Then the next plague that the Lord send. Darkness upon the land for three days. That was a plague. Darkness. And, and I, when, I, when I was writing this and I'm praying to God, I said, God. So there are times when some people don't have light. It's a plague. When I said don't have light, meaning that they suffer because of having proper lighting. Because everywhere is dark. May the Lord have mercy upon you here today. May darkness be the portion of your enemies. May darkness be the portion of... I'm praying today and I'm here to let you know, be in the spirit. May darkness be the portion. Those who are fighting you. Those who are fighting your children. Those who are fighting your marriage. Those who are fighting your finances. Those who are fighting your business. Those who are fighting your ministry. Those who are fighting what God placed in you. May darkness be their portion. Declare it. My God. Then another plague. Death of the firstborn. Even of the animals. Death of their firstborn. Hallelujah. Somebody join me in prayer this morning. Death of every firstborn in their family. Death. Every firstborn in their family. May death be the portion. Of those that are fighting you. 
We're talking about the ten plagues that God sent to Egypt. Moses was raised up in Egypt, but God had to use Moses to snatch his people out of the wickedness. I'm going to say something. Some people, they did good for you. They did good in your life. But they are doing bad to your family. May the Lord judge them. They say they love you, but they don't love your children. They say they love your children, but they don't love you. But I came to tell you, I declare war and plague to be upon them. Many of you are victim of circumstances. Many of you here today, you are victim of circumstances. The things that destroy your parents, you are facing it. But today we send plague and we send it right upon them. It's the word of God. We are not making anything up. God, why would God send plague upon every firstborn? Death upon every firstborn in the family. He's taking out the stronger ones. The firstborn is supposed to be the strongest. And that firstborn, firstborn, hey, the animals, hey, we send a plague of death upon every firstborn. For those who are fighting against us. Many of you are saying this is wicked prayer. But you want to know what's wicked? Look who died. Young people are dying. Innocent people. You refuse to pray the prayer. But this morning I raised this sword. Upon all of those who are fighting against El Shaddai. I came to let you know. Death of every firstborn will be your portion. How about that? Because when I talk about El Shaddai. You are a part of El Shaddai. So those who are fighting El Shaddai, they are fighting you. So whoever is fighting you, death will be their portion. Since you don't understand, let me break it down. Death will be their portion. Death will be their portion. Saskia Lada, they are fighting your firstborn, but I reverse it right now. I reverse it right now. I reverse it right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Saskia, they are fighting your firstborn, but as I raise up this sword, I'm at Tokoya Babako Shataya. I raise it up this morning. They are fighting my firstborn. And I'm raising this sword right now for healing for my firstborn. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. As I raise this sword this hour. On behalf of my firstborn. Lord let it be well with her wherever she is. I pray for healing right now. Let healing be your portion. Because of today's prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It is done. It is done. Let me share something with you. If you really want to know how blessed you are, look into your home. Don't look outside of your home. Look in your house. Look at the travel documents. Look at your phone. Look at the last five people you talked to. What was the conversation about? If you really want to know how blessed you are, I pray today that the bless will call you bless. I pray today that the bless, those who are blessed, they will call you blessed because of what God is about to do in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I didn't come today with a long message. I came to pray. So open your mouth and join me in prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, today we raise up our hands before your Lord God. And Lord, we ask you anything that is in us that does not glorify you. We ask you to move it in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we are asking you to move it right now. We are asking you to move it right now. Whatever is among us that does not glorify you. We're asking you to remove it in the name of Jesus Christ. We're asking you now, Daddy, anything that's being a hindrance in our life, we ask you to remove it. 
every setback, every hurdle, anything that was intended to block us, to stop us, we destroy, we set fire to that strong man, we set fire, we bind it, we bind up that strong man this morning. Many of your firstborn child is suffering. Yes, it's true. Don't be ashamed to pray for your firstborn. Many of you, your firstborn child is wayward. They are lost in sin. Pray for your firstborn. Pray for your firstborn. Declare a word over your firstborn child. The Bible said God sent death to plague every firstborn in Egypt during the time when, you see, God is giving them what they deserve. Look what they did to the children of Israel. Why? It's wickedness. So God gave them a taste of their own medicine. The reason why God sent all these different plagues because they were practicing witchcraft. They could do most of the things that Moses did. But when darkness came upon the earth, ah, they got scared. When the old place became dark. So today we pray. Today we pray. Today we pray. That the enemies their ways be dark and slippery. Today we pray. Sister Lana. Sister Angela. Sister Marcia. Sister Mariah. Sister Kayan. Sister Anika. Sister Julene. Sister Pauline. Sister Carol, today we pray. Sister, Sister Petronia. My God. Petronia Bess. Petrona Bailey. Michelle Chambers. Debbie Eversley. Today we pray that your enemies' ways be dark and slippery. Raquel Burke. We pray for you and your children. Hallelujah. Kayan Walters. My God. Beverly Campbell. Shevan Roden, today we pray for you. Mataraba Kosaya. May those who come up against you be disgraced. May God disgrace your enemies. Go ahead, Sister Lorraine. Declare it. May the Lord do it for you and your family. Jesus, I hear the Lord said he's going to give you a new family. Sister Lorraine, ah, I hear the Lord said new family. He's going to give you a new family. I don't know what that means, but God said he's going to give you a new family. Get ready. Get ready, Sister Latoya. Open your mouth and declare it. New family for me too. New family for me too. Declare it. Many of you are waiting for God to bless you. I remember maybe a year or two years ago, or maybe less, some young women were following me here on, on, on social media, and they finally came to church. They came to church. They were invited to church by a relative of theirs, and um, the Lord used me to pray with them. They came a few times. This morning, I, I got the opportunity to watch a video. The two sisters got married yesterday on the same day the same it, it's such a beautiful thing i remember when i was watching the wedding the lord said but they came to church and you prayed for them too they came to church and god used me to pray for them to lay hands on them Harabakushaya. yesterday the two sisters got married they were invited to church and they came and God used me to pray for them too. They both married to men of God. The two sisters got married to two men of God. May the Lord have mercy upon you. I release the same grace upon every single woman that's here. Every single man that's here. I release the grace of God upon you to be married to powerful women of God. The two sisters got married yesterday to two men of God. I never forget Sister Steele, as I was watching the video, the Lord brought it back to my remembrance that you brought them to church. 
and I laid hands on them. And they both got married yesterday. To God be all the glory. Married to powerful men of God. Look at what the Lord has done. We give glory to the Lord. He reigned. Who could it be but Jesus? One thing I want to say here. Wish other people and their children well. The same thing that you do for others, God will do for you. Yeah, they came to the church on a few occasions and they sowed into the ministry. Hey, they sowed. <laughs> They sowed into the ministry. They even sent for their anointing oils. I have not forgotten. The Lord is, thank you Holy Spirit. He's bringing the thing back to my, my remembrance. They both got married yesterday. Two sisters. May the Lord show you the same grace. May the Lord show you the same grace. May the Lord show you the same grace. Sister Olive, good morning. You're going to have to go back and watch it from the live. And when you're watching it, Sister Olive, get your machete. Because you're going to have to do some chopping. Sister Olive Mason, when you are watching it from the beginning, make sure you grab your machete. Because you're going to have to do some chopping. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There is nothing too hard for the Lord to do. Yeah. When, when, when I saw the video. The women they were walking in. One sister walking. Then the other sister walking. It was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. Both of them got married to men of God. Who could it be but Jesus? We cannot take God's glory. All we have to do is be obedient. When God touch our heart to pray for people, put your personal feelings aside and bless God people. Hallelujah. Jesus. Be careful what you said about someone. You never know who is an angel among you. No. These women are married women. Moving on to different things, different chapters in their life. No, you see, life does not stop at marriage. Once you get married, it's a ministry. So you move on to the other segment. And this is why we have to be careful who we tangle. We get entangled with because some people will tie our feet when we're married to the wrong people. They can't follow us where God is taking us. They become a burden and not a blessing. They will become burden and not blessing. So for those of you here who desire to be married, it is my prayer that I get to see the video. Even if I don't get to come, I'll get to see the video so I can tell the world that God has opened those doors for you. Amen? It is well. And if you're here going through problems in your marriage, I pray the Lord fix it. If you are married and you are on this platform, legally married, I pray that the Lord fix your marriage. Hallelujah. Amen. And for those of you who are still waiting, don't do anything outside of the will of God. Wait. Wait. Somebody said, woman of God, really made me think about my last five conversation it's true yeah if you really want to know how good you are how bad you're doing in life look at your phone and look at the last five people you talk to and look remember the conversations you had that alone will tell you where you are in life that right there will state your whole entire life what you need to do 
what you need to fix, who you need to dismiss, who you need to let go, who you need to hold on to. Amen? May the Lord straighten you out. The word, the song earlier came and it said, be ready at the gate to meet him. It means that God is at a place waiting for us. So when, when it's time, and if you're not ready, you're in trouble. Stop playing church. Many people, they want everything that comes with living a righteous life. And they refuse. They refuse to do what's right. And like I said, those two women that just got married yesterday, they fasted and prayed a lot. They saw. They were honest. They believed God to come true for them, and he did. They believed God to come true, and God did. You see, you have to set yourself in alignment to receive your blessings. There are some portion of our blessings that we are responsible for. Because if we are in the wrong place at the wrong time, we are in trouble. You cannot have Dick, Tom, and Harry on the line when you're waiting for Mr. Right. Dick, Tom, and Harry is Mr. Right now. Yet you're still waiting for Mr. Right. You're highly engaged with everybody and their parents, and yet you're still single. That don't work. Get down to knee city. Get on your knees and fast and pray. And allow the Lord to bless you. Pray for your children the way you pray for yourself. Somebody said, Dick, Tom and Harry bring confusion. Of course. It's a distraction. You need to hear from God. And when you have all these people on your phone, ah, you can't be sleeping with somebody's husband and waiting on a husband. You cannot be, yeah, uh huh. You cannot be sleep laying down with somebody else's husband and said you're waiting on your husband. No. Remember the woman at the well when she met Jesus. When she met. Jesus, what happened? That was the last time she laid on with that man that she left back in her bed. I'm here to let you know, people of God, clean up. Clean up time. Clean up time. There are some men with wandering eyes. Even when they are in a full-blown relationship at home, they are still at workplace trying to figure out who they can gym squeeze you with. But I'm here to let you know, listen, it's not going to work. I always tell people, if you're not unhappy, do something about it. You don't have to cheat. Cheating lessen your value. Hello? Did you know that when you cheat, it lessen your value? It takes away your value. You don't have to cheat. It's the truth. You don't have to cheat. Cheating lessens your value. It speaks of your inability, your inability to be faithful. Cheating only proves that you're not worthy. You're not trustworthy to be with anyone, especially God's people. So be careful what you're doing. Don't cheat. When you cheat, you're cheating on yourself. When you cheat, you're cheating on yourself. You're robbing yourself of your peace. My God. When you cheat, it proves that you're unable to be faithful to even your own self. It lowers your value. It depreciates you. Look at it from a different eye. When you wait on the Lord and he opened those doors, you will be glad you waited. I just want you to know a lot of people are not going to be so intrigued by this message, but it's okay. 
it's time to repent and do what's right. A lot of people won't be intrigued. But listen to what I'm saying here. You don't have to continue in sin. This is not to dull your shine. This is giving you soap and water to wash you off. To start brand new. Amen. This is not to dull your shine. This is not to disgrace you. This is to strengthen you. So I came to let you know, if you go to church and you pay the biggest tithes and they are not telling you to repent, you're in trouble. Hallelujah. If you go to church and they are not telling you to repent because your tithes and your offering in big is big, you are in trouble. You are in trouble. God set a standard. Hallelujah. Jesus. God has set a standard. Glory to God. You know, earlier when we started, the Lord said, so into this message. But I'm going to say something. Sister Raquel, I see your question. But the Lord said, do a 21 days of fasting. Raquel Burke, the Lord loves you. He said there will be a turnaround. You have to do a 21 days of fasting. And this fasting requires cleansing. You're going to clean yourself. You're going to ask God for forgiveness. A lot of things that came out of your mouth, you're going you're gonna to go to the Lord. You're going to repent and ask God for a second chance. Go to God and he will answer you directly. He will tell you what to do. He will tell you where to go. He will show you what you need to see. You have to stay pure during those 21 days. Don't drink any wine. Don't eat anything sweet for 21 days. This is for you only. This is not for the, the platform. This is for you, Raquel Burke. Go to the Lord in fasting. And I'm going to be specific. Don't eat any bread. Don't drink any wine. And don't eat anything sweet. Go, this is what the Lord is telling me to tell you. Come to him on your knees. I don't know if you're going to have to take some time off your job. But find time. Stay pure. And don't get into any conversation with anybody to, to upset you. Because you're going to have to focus. You want to hear from the Lord. He's about to do something. So go to the Lord in fasting. And he will direct you. Amen. Jesus. It will, it will be well with you. It will be well with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. If you are here watching this broadcast and you are not a member of a church and you desire to join us, the number is 860-634-8557. Hallelujah. If you are a member of a church and you want to partner with us in giving, the same number you can use Zelle, PayPal, or Cash App. I pray today that the Lord will bless you with this message. It will open your eyes and open your doors. And in this season, I pray that you will only hear what God wants you to hear. Amen. If this message has touched you, it is my prayer that you be a blessing in this time. People of God, remember, our fasting begins on the 15th uh -huh. for seven days. On the 15th. Of this month 
on fasting begins and it will be for seven days remember people of god remember your covenant seed is expected by the third sunday of this month hallelujah i am reminding you i am reminding you people of god it's time for your offering <laughs> Uh, I, I thank God for this message. You know, I, I'm taking my portion from it as well. Hallelujah. People of God, listen. Who can stop you? Once you stop lying and cheating, your eyes will be open to the things that you couldn't see. When you are lying, you're, you're, you're blind because you're fooling yourself. You're not only lying to others, you're also lying to yourself. Glory to God. So I encourage you to start being honest and speak the truth. Hallelujah. We will be fasting in October, starting October 15 for seven days. Thank you, Jesus. It is well. I'm thankful to God to eat for each and every one of you that comes. And even to help out by putting up those little notifications. I appreciate you. I want you to know you are appreciated. And in this month of October, I will be celebrating my birthday on the end of the month. And my way of celebrating my birthday is giving back. So 10% off on all the products that we have for sale. The anointing oil, the prayer shawl, the holy water the prophetic soul everything is 10 percent off that's my way of celebrating my birthday to give back amen hallelujah it's my way of celebrating i don't know why the lord have me doing this but it's all good yeah it's all good i stop questioning god because each time i question god i get into trouble but i encourage you people of god to be obedient it's time for your offering. And if the Lord touch your heart to pay your tithes, do so. You can use Zelle, PayPal, or Cash App. We are still collecting. Amen. We are still collecting funds for the building, building fund for the church. So don't forget we are collecting building fund for the church. God is faithful to us. We are getting ready to do great things for the Lord. So I don't want you to miss out on your blessings. Amen. People of God, be generous. I was so disappointed when I see what we have collected for charity. So I'm encouraging you to do better. We're coming close to the end of the year. And a lot of people are in need. We have to be a blessing. You know, when someone asks for help and I'm not able to do it, I feel sad. But I'm encouraging you. Without you, we can't do much. We need your help. Hallelujah. We need your assistance. So stretch forth your hands to the ministry and be a blessing. If God has been good to you, be a blessing. Amen. And for those of you who are here and don't have a job, I pray that the Lord will open your doors. Hallelujah. I pray that the Lord will open your doors. Seriously, people are asking for assistance and there's nothing I can do for them because there is no money. So I encourage you to support El Shaddai Wallet so we can have money to be a blessing to those in need. I don't call people's names, but people are asking for assistance. And many are there, many are not working, many are retired. You know, people are going through a lot of hardship and we need to bless those who we can bless. And whatever God touch our heart to do, we have to do it. So please, please, I beseech you by the mercies of God, bless the ministry. Bless it. Show God that you are a cheerful giver and you appreciate what we are doing for him. Amen. My time is up. I have to go. Have yourself a wonderful day. May the grace of the Lord 
the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.